Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Coffee Rant with Dano and Frank, our Patriot Bald Eagle. You have to hit pause on this video to get your coffee or whatever beverage you deem necessary. Go ahead and do that now as this will be a lengthy discussion. We have a lot to talk about. I don't even really know how to discuss this stuff anymore, guys. Uh, so we are going to be having a little bit of help from Newsweek's website. We'll be reading a little bit from this as they... Uh, actually, we're going to do a little bit of a recap, too, as they have provided that for us at the end of this article. What I really liked about it is it kind of reminds me of how I take my notes in this stuff. Like, in order. So, anyway, we're going to get right into it here. Mushrooms, okay, this Anaki mushrooms are on recall from a California-based company. Um, and we'll just get into the article here. Mushroom recall as warning issued over potential listeria contamination. A mushroom recall has been issued on Friday by HH Fresh Trading Corp amid concerns of possible listeria contamination. The California-based company announced the recalled Taiwan Anaki mushrooms that were distributed in West Virginia in multiple retail store locations and were sold on August 20th and August 23rd, with 240 cases for each date. So I guess that would be a total of 520 cases, I assume. No, I'm sorry, 480 240 on each date. So yes, 480 total. It is early for me, guys, and uh, working on a bunch of different news stories right now. It's it's just crazy. Everything that is happening. Also, real quick, tomorrow is election day. Get out and vote. Today is November 4th, 2024. Just for point of reference, I will be voting very early. I will be covering that in a video um, sometime tomorrow, but just... I'm trying to constantly throw this out here. Just get out and vote. Make sure you vote. Your vote does matter. Don't let anybody tell you different. Uh, the California, uh, the mushroom product comes in a 200 gram clear past plastic package marked with barcode. Uh, it's pound, like the pound sign, 4711498860. One nine on the back of the product. While no illnesses have been reported, officials urge consumers to discard the products or return them for refunds. Return them for the refund. Get your money back. The potential for contamination was noted after routine testing was performed by the Food and Drug Administration, revealing the presence of listeria in 200 gram of Anaki in October. Meanwhile, the the production of the mushrooms has since been suspended while the FDA and the HH Fresh Trading Corp continue to investigate the source of the problem. And then they go on to talk about what listeria is, different signs. We have covered that so much, we're just going to breeze through that here. But I do want to go through this as reminders of things that are still under investigation and continue to grow. Not all, some of these have been concluded, but a lot of these are still under investigation. The recall marks the latest listeria related food safety incident in the U.S. this year. Previous recalls include frozen waffles, uh, and they leave links. That's what I like. They leave links in this article to where you can click and read through their different articles of what they are going through of the different frozen waffles and what we're going to get into next. Uh, previous recalls include frozen waffles and other breakfast products sold in many grocery stores in which Treehouse Foods Incorporated has expanded its initial recall. And that is true. It keeps getting bigger. It keeps getting bigger. Uh, in addition, Boar's Head pulled more than 7 million pounds of deli meat in July and Bruce Pack recalled nearly 12 million pounds of meat and poultry last month. Both cases also stem from routine listeria testing. Now let's talk about that for a minute. So we, we need these reminders of things that are going on. Because there are so much, so many recalls right now, I think a lot of people keep commenting on the different McDonald's recall and all that stuff as to where that is still under a big investigation as well for E. coli. Okay? But we can't forget 
these that have just happened over the last couple months and are ongoing. Now, Bruce Pack turned out to be maybe one of the biggest recalls I've ever seen in my life. It is enormous. It covered for, for so many products. Like if they say don't buy the cantaloupe, you know, or something, right? For like from last year with that recall. You know, okay, so you just don't buy cantaloupe. But with this Bruce Pack thing, this involves a ton of different products scattered throughout stores. Different salad kits. You know, as we know, I always refer to Walmart because everybody has Walmart, right? The salad kits, the market side salad kits, but everything else that's involved with other stores as well. Like Michelinas, some of the different chicken that was in Michelina meals has been on recall. Now these have all been pulled off the shelves by now, hopefully, okay? But if you haven't heard any of these recalls, it's good to remind people, for one, if we have new viewers that just haven't seen this on the news, I don't. I remember Boar's Head that was advertised on the news like crazy. This Bruce Pack isn't advertised as much as I think it should be. I've been tuning in more and more to the uh, to the news lately because I just want to see if they're talking about it. That's that's how I know, right? I'm not one to really watch the news. I don't need to watch the weather. I look at it on my phone. I always hated how they would get on the news in the morning and then the first thing it's like, oh, it is 60 degrees outside. Here next, we're going to talk about the rest of the weather. And then 25 minutes later, they go over the weather. Well, it's nice. We don't have to do that anymore. We just get on our phone and see what the weather's going to be. But I get it. I get it. They want you to tune in, you know, and, and that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So those are the reminders, okay, with things constantly happening we need to talk about something else, something maybe a little more disturbing. And I had to do a little bit of research on this. One of our longtime viewers had mentioned this yesterday, and I was already working on a bit of a rundown of what is going on. Um, and we are going to try and figure this out. Now, this is something that... Um, this was updated on October 31st, so it was a few days ago, but it looks like this is expanding as well. Okay, so Newsweek, also, we're also going to be reading from Newsweek, although I did take from a couple other articles what I'm going to be talking about from uh, some other different sites. But we're just going to read this directly from Newsweek, so in case you haven't heard, we can go over a couple things here. Okay, so there's been a recall on baby powder. Over possible asbestos contamination. I said that right, guys. I said, how many people knew? Now, you you know, you may have known. I didn't. I'm thinking baby powder? Asbestos? You mean the material that the country and you probably from, from older homes... And everything that have been spending billions and billions and billions of dollars on from over the last who knows how many years to get rid of asbestos. Here we find it in baby powder. There's a reason for that. And we're going to go over that. Okay. So here is the start of the article. Thousands of baby powder. Uh, thousands of baby powder uh, bottles have been recalled across 35 states. 35 states, and probably going to grow, due to potential contamination with asbestos. Dynarex, uh, D-Y-N-A-R-E-X, Dynarex, Corporation, I, I'm, I hope that's how you pronounce it. Dynarex Corporation initiated the recall on September 19th. Okay, let's get into it. On September 19th, which has now been expanded to include over 40,000 bottles of their products. The question I have here, okay, we, if they recalled it or whatever, no, I've never heard about it. I've been covering these recalls, and I, I look at all recalls. I don't cover, like, a lot of different car and, and, and different, you know, home items and stuff like that in recalls as to where we mostly cover food on the channel. Now, 
this one caught my eye because I initially, when I first saw this, I thought they were talking about baby formula. As most of you know who have been on the channel for a long time know that I covered the baby formula crisis a couple years ago. It was bad. It was gone. Couldn't find baby formula anywhere. You would find certain kinds, but it would, it would always be kinds that pe people, we had viewers coming to our channel to try and find, try to find where if we could find the baby formula they needed and then to see if we can find a way that they could order it online. Online options had failed in that and I was going everywhere to try and find baby formula. So yes, when I first saw this, I was like, oh my goodness. And okay, it's baby powder. Still concerning, not as concerning as formula, okay? Still concerning, though, okay? Not not dumbing it down much, but I would worry that if this was baby formula, which it's not, that that would have carried over into other products, and this could very well carry over into other products. But anyway, moving on. Baby powder has traditionally been made using a mineral called talc, okay? So that is... That's the key here. So remember that T-A-L-C, talc. Although some modern formulas are based on corn or potato starch, talc, which is very effective at absorbing moisture and reducing friction rashes, is composed mainly of magnesium, silicone, and oxygen, and is found in many cosmetic products for both adults and babies. Talc is often mined from areas where other minerals are present, including, you guessed it, asbestos. Asbestos is a known carcinogen. Uh, quote, if talc mining sites are not carefully chosen or if proper steps are not taken to adequately purify the talc, uh, it may contain asbestos, end quote, the FDA said in a statement. Asbestos is often encountered in building materials, especially in other buildings. As a result, construction and demolition workers are often exposed to dangerous levels of this compound. According to the World Health Organization, asbestos exposure is linked to more than 200,000 deaths every year around the world. Routine sampling of the Dynacare baby powder by the FDA revealed low levels of asbestos in these products. The initial recall in September uh, concerned 62 cases of 14-ounce baby powder bottles. There are 24 bottles per case. Following further investigation by the FDA, a further 1,020 cases of 14 and 4-ounce bottles, or nearly 42,800 bottles of baby powder, have been included in the recall as all products were made from the same bulk material. Quote, the company has ceased the distribution of the product as an investigation is proceeding to determine what caused the contamination of the talk, end quote, the FDA said. Quote, consumers who have purchased Dynacare baby powder should discontinue use immediately and return it for a full refund. At least they're saying return it for a refund. No, no sight of, hey, throw it away. No, no, no. Get your money back. Uh, yeah, don't forget to vote tomorrow, guys. Did I say that already? Pretty sure I did. I'm going to be saying a lot, a lot here over the next 24 hours. Get out and vote. If you don't drive, ask a friend. Ask a friend. Get out. Get out and vote, vote, vote. Okay. Newsweek says uh, they have contacted the uh, Dynarex Corporation and Amazon, where the product was sold online via email for comment. Uh, so far, no adverse events have been reported in relation to this event. I mean, I feel like that is something that would take a long time. Okay, I, and I'm just assuming here from what I know of, of products from asbestos before, things that I've read about asbestos before, but I would assume that it would take a long time for things to pop up, per se. I don't, you know, it's like, and I'm just assuming, okay, the levels of this, I'm no doctor, I'm no scientist, I'm just saying that, you know, it's good to get rid of it as soon as possible and not keep using it, right? Okay, now here, uh, they have an entire list of all these batch numbers here, 
okay? Um, we will quickly go over some. It's a popular product. Over 35 states as well. Okay, guys, so I had to edit. I started going over the different batch numbers here, and there are a lot of them, and they go over the different manufacturing dates and the expiration dates, and they also give a product image. So if you believe that you are affected by this baby powder, um, I would definitely check out the Newsweek website. You can just Google uh, baby powder Newsweek and this article will come up. But I didn't want to extend this video out too long because I have another video that I'm working on right now um, and we have to get, go over that as well. But yes, and they give a, like I said, they give a map that has all the different states. Usually they have all the states lined up. Usually they have all the different states and I can just go over it in order. This is a map. Okay, and it's like all the all the states are around. So if you want to check out to see if you're, it looks like uh, pretty much most of the Midwest, uh, all on the West Coast, most of the East Coast, uh, but it seems like this was distributed all over the country. So if you are affected by this, make sure you check it out. Um, guys, I mean, it's just, it's one thing after another. It really is. You can't make this stuff up. It just keeps happening. Keeps happening. Thank you. Uh, we also had a couple other viewers uh, who had mentioned this one over the last couple days as well. I was working on more recalls, going over these different products, guys. Um, I took last night off. I needed a, a mental break. Um, as Thank you for watching uh, mine and Jessica's video at Costco. Uh, had a lot of comments on that. Yes, Costco can get overwhelming. Uh, especially if you go there on a Saturday. Don't go there on a Saturday. It is... Uh, absolute madness but it was a lot of fun a lot of fun we got some things we needed um and you know we'll just see see what happens with the other costco we were talking about the bridge a little bit they already have one area of the bridge back open don't know when the other side will be but it seems like they're a little more optimistic about it now so that will help alleviate some of the traffic from ohio into kentucky so either way I'm, next time I go to Costco, I'm going to the one in Florence because that one in Tri-County or Liberty Township, that one is crazy. But anyway, guys, I should have some more news here for you later on some other things, putting together a couple things right now after this video. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.